my gosh, I love these penguins. I had no idea how much I wanted these penguins in my life until here they are in the newest pack for Planet Zoo, the aquatic pack. And hello everyone, and we are going to be diving in to a really quick overview of the aquatic pack with all of its new animals and all of its new items so that you guys can see everything it has to offer. Oh, that is so freaking cool. If you guys are deciding if you want to add it into your Planet Zoo adventures yourselves or not. So we're going to go ahead and start off by pointing out all of the new animals that have actually come with the pack, starting off with the King Penguin. There are going to be four new animals that you can put into large exhibits and one new animal that you can put into small exhibits. And I have to say, after going through all of the animals, I'm kind of in love with every single one of them. Sometimes in previous packs that have come out for Planet Zoo, I have like one superstar animal that I really love and a couple that were like, okay, I'm glad you're here, but you don't really stand out a lot to me. But I think because there has been such a great emphasis on making these aquatic animals truly part of their aquatic environment, every single one of them is just so amazing to watch. Really, these guys, oh, look at the baby penguin. He is so fluffy. But really, what is great about these guys are their animations and their sounds. I've always been super impressed with how that comes off in Planet Zoo, but I feel like this time, and you can see a couple penguins over here, Oh, smacking at each other. Oh my gosh. But this time I really feel like the movements, the animations, the way that the animals behave in the aquatic pack are just absolutely stellar. What the very first of the animals we'll go ahead and focus on is actually the king penguin. Like I said, you guys have already gotten to see them do some of my favorite behaviors. Diving for fish is one of my favorite things that they actually do with the brand new aquatic feeder that actually came in the update that also is live today. And that that's just a beautiful elegant thing to see i swear i could just sit there and watch them go after those fish underwater all the time and with the king penguin my other favorite thing about them other than their movements they even poop the way penguins do i saw you do that sir keeping it real in the zoo i appreciate that is the way that they will actually tap their beaks together when they mate. So when they do find someone that they're going to bond with, they stand next to them and they stroke their beaks along the sides and then tap their beaks together. That's one of my absolute favorite things other than their, the way that they dive for fish that has really made me fall in love with them since getting the aquatic pack to try out. And the other thing that is really exciting for the penguins and definitely a great challenge if you guys happen to love penguins and want to add them into yours do is their social group yeah their social group it's up to 500 so if you really 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 want to go and make your zoo a like penguin challenge zoo or a fantastic penguin island you can add up to over 500 king penguins and live out all of your little tuxedo bird dreams and of course, the penguins are not the only animals that have been added into the aquatic pack. The next guy up is the gray seal. And okay, I'm going to be honest. When I heard that the seals were coming into the pack, I thought, oh, that's nice. I thought they were kind of going to be like a nice round out the edges animal, kind of like a whole bunch of the ugulates and the, the hooved animals that we often get. Sometimes feel like they sort of, you know, round off the edges for the more exciting animals like the leopards and the lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. But actually, I have fallen in love with these seals. My favorite thing about them so far is the way that they waddle on land that I had no idea I wanted to see that. I had no idea it would be so hilarious to watch their very slow inchworming across the land as they make their way into the water where they truly turn into extremely elegant creatures. And this is actually my other favorite thing about them is when they go ahead and they kind of sit in the water and they'll hang in place and just have their body be vertical for a moment. For some reason, it just tickles me so much. And I think that's because in St. Louis, there is a very, very happy seal who will spend her day just sitting like that straight vertically in the water. And if you walk up to her, you can put your hand up against the glass and she'll play a game with you by following your hand up and down, up and down the glass for just hours. She spends her whole day playing with the guests like that. And so these seals remind me of that adorable seal. She was extremely precious. And they're also just hilarious to watch move. They really make me think about just the diversity of locomotion for different creatures in the world and how 
ridiculous some creatures look when they are getting around. But of course the seal is very, very elegant in the water. Being able to watch them in deeper water in particular really brings out some of their best traits. And I have to say, their sounds are hilarious. I really can't wait to see some of their fluffy little babies roaming around with my penguins too. The next animal in actually shifts away from all of the icy cold waters that we have been with in the aquatic pack so far and moves into South America, where it's really exciting to see that even though we have had a South American pack, there is still the potential to add more animals from South America. That's a really wonderful, huge continent full of such diversity of life in future packs. So seeing the Clover's Dwarf Cayman added in really made me excited because it makes me hopeful that in the future, we will see more animals filled into areas that we already have packs for just displayed for new traits for the fact that like this guy right here our little dwarf caiman is actually another aquatic animal where really you're going to see some of its best animations and its best behaviors when it is awake and willing to get into the water that is not this exact moment as you can see but you can also see one of the new enrichment items over here the bubble blower i actually really love to put the bubble blower into waterways now and it's very customizable for the coloring. I like to put it into the water and kind of pretend that it is a sea anemone. And that is one of my favorite things that we have done with this so far. But just tuck it in, change the colors, make it kind of stand out as more of a sea anemone in the shallows. That's been really fun. And then my other favorite thing, hi buddy! My other favorite thing about these tiny crocodilians, the little dwarf caimans, are that they're actually really beautiful. They are representative of another one of the crocodilians in the world, one of the most ancient and enduring of all of the current species that exist. And it's just really such a beautiful one to look at. I don't know many other crocodilians that have such a gorgeous jaw, and it's also really adorable when they do get in the water. Let me see if I can get this guy to go in. Oh, I don't know if he's going to go in the water, but I think we might have something else going on over here. Oh, no way. This may very well. Oh, it's a mating display, you guys. How lucky. Oh, that's really cool. So with the dwarf caiman, they usually only are in a territory of their own, but sometimes you will have a male and female who have bonded and are potentially going to have mates share a territory. And that seems to be what we just were experiencing right there. Whoops, and I am just like trying to put a habitat down. That's fine. So how cool, we might see some more little dwarf caiman born and added into our area pretty soon. Uh, now what's really tricky with the little dwarf caiman is you do need to make sure that their water and their surrounding area is the right temperature. <laughs> and I keep running into that problem with these guys. Don't worry, it's just a sandbox zoo. We will fix it before- oh, and she's gonna have some babies! <gasps> how exciting! We'll check back in on those babies in just a second. Oh, that's really cool. But yeah, one of the best things that you can see with any of the aquatic animals is once they get into those waters. The tricky thing is, make sure you use your water heaters correctly to keep the waters at the right temperature. Let's go ahead and see what her babies actually are going to look like. I'm really curious. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at how beautiful it is just to watch these guys in the water. That is truly where all of the animals of the aquatic pack really shine. So be sure you spend some time in those waters with them. Keep them clean, keep them the right temperature, and you're going to see some really beautiful, beautiful behavior from every single one of them. This is just so relaxing, and I didn't expect that. These guys usually live in family groups where they will live with their mate and any children that they've had that year and in previous years. And they will spend a lot of their time fishing and hunting for anything that they can catch. They are very aggressive carnivores and they're actually a little scary to run into in real life. You want to be really careful if you're ever in a place where you run into a river otter, a giant river otter. Oh, but they are such a joy to watch underwater. These are another one of the creatures where you could just come in and you could spend hours watching how they move, oh, even with the snow above them. Hopefully their water is warm enough. <laughs> But watching how they move and trying to set up a beautiful new exhibit and habitat for them to really be able to explore riverways of their own. I haven't gotten any babies from these guys yet, but I will say their social structure is interesting because they are considered to be in a pack. And so when you have them socializing... Oh, wait! I do have babies from them! Oh my gosh, they snuck these little guys in! 
Okay, so we actually do have some little itty bitty baby otters. I didn't even see it where these guys snuck in, but they are here. They are freaking adorable. And as you can see, kind of like the wolves, they do stay in a pack group. So you'll have your dominant male and female, and then you will have their mini children who will usually stick around together. Oh, look at that little fluffy face and their little sharp high pitched calls who will stick around together to watch over the offspring and teach them how to be a giant river otter. They're a lot of fun to be able to work with. There you go, little guy. And I do think that it's really fun to be able to watch the adults and see how their bonding really develops over time. So let me see if I can grab one of the adults from underwater. There you are, my dear. And one of the interesting things with this pair of river otters is when I was just setting the zoo up and getting ready to show off all the aquatic packs for you, it was really interesting to see how their bonding status was not set. And you really had to wait until they had spent a little bit of time together before they would go ahead and bond, form this little pack of theirs and start a family. The bonding status, I think, is a new part of the update that has recently come out. And it really makes the animals even more interesting and individual, which I really, really love about them. Oh, but these guys are beautiful. But all right, let's go ahead and look at our last of the new animals that have come into this pack, and then we'll do a quick overview of all of the beautiful items that have been added in too. Spoilers, there's some new plants and I'm very happy. And here we have our final of the five animals that come in the aquatic pack, the Diamondback Terrapin. This little guy is the only small habitat animal that you can have who is going to go into those small exhibits for you. Don't worry, the guests still love them and I do too. Look at all of those beautiful little spots. The Diamondback Terrapin is actually a species native to the east coast of the United States. You can find them in the estuaries and the swamps there. It is very distinctive looking and I think it was an excellent excellent choice for the aquatic pack. There is still hundreds of other amazing aquatic animals that you could add in, big or small, but every single one of the ones that have been picked are very distinctive and there has been a lot of care given to their designs, their animations, to their colorations. I'm just really pleased. It just feels like each one of the new packs improves how the animals look, how they interact, how the guests interact with them, and I'm just really excited to see where we go from here. I hope maybe we'll even get more aquatic creatures, maybe under some new theme or new name in the future. Oh, look at these little ones! And I just love them. So those are all five of the animals, my friends. Let's go ahead and look over some of the objects and items, especially the new plants. All right, so laid out here are all of the items and the new builds that actually come in the blueprint section of the aquatic pack. Pardon all of the snow, we started off in Antarctica for the sandbox zoo so that the penguins could be very comfortable. And I am really, really pleased with the variety that we have here. A lot of the packs in the past have been very heavily themed like on the South American section or very heavily themed on the Arctic section. But this pack actually contains both a lot of icy items to celebrate the penguins and and the seals, as well as a lot of jungle items to really add in even more things to represent those swamps, the estuaries, and some of the South American plants that are out there. So yeah, I, we'll get to the plants in just a second. But just to go ahead and show you guys what's what, we do have some beautiful new fountains right over here. I love this otter fountain. It's really beautifully put together quite exciting to see. We have got a lovely little penguin fountain actually featuring, or excuse me, a penguin statue featuring one of my favorite new rocks that has actually come in this pack. Look at this hexagon rock. Some of the most beautiful natural formations I have seen along coasts throughout the world use this like hexagon formation. I can't exactly remember why that is, but it's a really cool geographical feature that does show up in the world. And I absolutely absolutely adore it. I can see myself pulling the penguins off and using this in several places, especially to make some very distinctive coastlines. And then when it comes to the exhibits, they actually have pre-built some of the wonderful exhibit blueprints for us, using a whole bunch of gorgeous rocks to give you that sense that you're kind of looking down into the undergrowth, like looking between the branches and the trees of an estuary or a bayou, which I really love. 
it's just a very lovely setup and it's covered in plants especially all over the roof so yeah that's kind of an instant win for me i might even go ahead and just try to like pluck the top layer off and use that to fill up some corners around my different zoos so very much love the way that each of the exhibit habitats is laid out Here's the small one. You guys already saw the large one. Here's the medium one that happens to have the diamond terrapins in it right now with all of their decorative items so they can hopefully be as happy as possible. There's a lot of babies in this one, so I think that they're very pleased. Over here, we've got the two Arctic shop, the little penguin Arctic shop shells. I forgot to put in any shops. That's okay. This is just a sandbox zoo here for demonstration purposes only. Very nice, very nice, using a whole bunch of their new items. This is the theme that they have gone with for all of the new staff lounges. So there are some lovely bushes on the side, highly approved. Could probably use a few more bushes. There's a couple inside. I can deal with it. You can see this new seagull. We will get to the seagull in just a second. That is a new decorative item that I very much love and enjoy. But the new planking on the side of these buildings is actually really beautiful, very distinctive. You guys will see all the pieces of it laid out and you can change the color of all of it. Also, I love the way that we have the fake rock running along the side. I really think that that is an excellent touch. Whoever built these did a great job utilizing some of the pieces that have already come in Planet Zoo and some of these new pieces. This is right over here. We have got the large keeper hut. Over here we have got the staff lounge. Very nice, very nice. These habitats, I had to rip this one apart because I added in so many penguins, <laughs> but there are actually two habitats that come pre-built in the blueprints now. You can get a small habitat that's really focused on being for penguins. In fact, since I destroyed that one, let me go ahead and pull up the small habitat so you guys can see what it looks like. I was very excited when I saw, excuse me, it's a medium sized habitat, but I was very, very excited when I actually saw that these, let's see if we can get this. Yes, yes, I know. All right, terrain modification failed. Let's see if we can shove this. It's a little tricky to actually get down. Ah, phooey. Here, we'll just let you guys see it like this. But I was really pleased to see that if you just want to be able to plunk down some penguins right away, there actually is, there we go, a couple habitats to be able to pick from. There is a medium aquatic habitat pre-built ready for you to go, only around $4,000 too, which is pretty affordable for most people's franchise zoos. And then there's also a large aquatic habitat, which you guys actually saw the caimans and you saw the... There we go. You guys saw the caimans and you guys saw the giant river otters in them. All you need to do is be able to place these down, add in your water, make sure it's all hooked up to clean that water because you really want to see the beauty of these creatures actually in the water. Trust me, it's just stunning. And you're good to go. But this was really great because there's a lot of finicky little pieces to overlay to make the snow look this good. It's really hard to be able to do that kind of overlapping. And knowing that there's a couple habitats just ready to be able to put down like some of the hay in there and really make it comfortable for your penguins so you can just get moving. I really like that. I can't remember if the other packs have actually included having pre-built habitats, but I hope that's something that goes forward with all of the packs. All right, and then let's go ahead and move on and I will show you guys some of the other items. Over here, we have got the large bathroom. Again, this great fun mixture where we have a lot of Arctic themed and Tundra themed items, but then this one is definitely more of a tropical tone. It's got plants on top. It has got these lovely like leaves everywhere, but it has just a touch of the seals and the penguins, which I really, I, I really like that. Just that we have two different styles that got mixed in this time. And speaking of different styles, here's just a quick overview of the small staff lounge, the big staff lounge. We have got ourselves the vet office. These ones really, like the South American pack, each one of the buildings really was very distinctive and different. I will admit for the pre-built blueprints, which are not really the biggest feature of any pack, to be honest, they just kind of help you get moving. But I really feel like these ones don't stand out a ton to me. I have never noticed this little clipboard though. Very curious about where that clipboard came from. I would love to use that more often. You guys know how much I love my list. So these all kind of are very uniform, uh, which is great if you're going for a more uniform look to your zoo. And it just doesn't stand out as much as like the Australian pack uh, had its, yeah, its featured blueprints for the different facilities really stand out. But that's okay, because honestly, the uniform look probably looks great. And what really tickled me though, 
are these? <laughs> these are the Animal Trade Center. Then we have got the Small Keeper Hut. We have got the Aquatic Research Center and we've got the Aquatic Workshop. And you guys, they are so precious. I would decorate absolutely everywhere with these little buildings in all manner. I would make them into shops. I would make them into bathrooms. I would make them into like a little series of role play cabins that people could stay in. This is precious and adorable. I love these so much. And they do a great job of showing off that wood paneling I was talking about earlier as well. You can change all of the colors on it. You can change the colors of on the roofing. It really just goes together so well. And I love how there's different things on each one of these roofs. Like that's just precious. Oh, and look at the back. I didn't even notice that there's windows at the back. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, look at the little seagull. Yes, I, I love this idea and I love this design and I would love to do something with this kind of like lifted up jetty look, which is very good because one of the blueprints that does already come pre-built are these aquatic jetties. That is going to be a lot of fun to figure out how to add in to different exhibits, how to add in to different zoos. I really love the look of it. I love the idea of trying to do the challenge of getting a path down here so people will be able to walk on these. They're really, really cute. And I could definitely see them being a very quick and easy addition into a lot of the zoo blueprints. Also, there is a new bridge, a covered bridge as well. Very cool. I'm definitely like it's lined up so it looks like you should be able to get your path just right if you spend enough time messing with it. I like it. I like the covered bridge look. The bridges are very, very popular on the workshop after all. And really the longer that we spend with Planet Zoo, the more I've noticed that things like bridges are really important to have as decorative items. Speaking of other decorative items that are really important to have, the plants! The plants, of course! So we do have a few pre-built little little decorations with the plants. We'll go through them really quickly. We've got some of these beautiful aquatic, or excuse me, beautiful plants kind of from the Amazon over here, including the rutabaga plant. We'll talk about that guy in just a second. But I really love this look as well. And it includes some of the new stones that I didn't even think to do this with the aquatic fox rocks, but you can change the colors of the stones so that they can either be very, very white when I first saw them, I was only thinking about like how you could have these guys fit in with a lot of the like tundra rocks. So you see here, they did two different colors on these aquatic, like on these uh, aquatic fox rocks. So I was only thinking of like a rock that was kind of monocolor with shadows. But when you add in that greenery, like as the second color, you have instant mossy rocks, which is just fantastic. You guys know how much I love mossy rocks. They do have mossy rocks that got added in when the South American pack did come out, but this gives you a little bit more depth on those. We're not talking about the dynamic mossy rocks. We're just talking about like moss gently tucked lovingly into the nooks and crannies of the rocks. I love it. We've got another pre-built little nature scene over here. This is actually a model rock tree, which I think is very interesting and probably meant to be used kind of if you're going to stick this so that most of it's underwater because it looks sort of like a bayou plant. We've also got a new waterfall scene to really show off the new waterfall pieces, which I really love. I'll show you the waterfall pieces in just a second. They give you the ability to have this more uniform looking waterfall. In the past, we really focused on having kind of these like free flowing waterfalls where it was really difficult to make behind the waterfall look as good as you wanted. Waterfall building was definitely a like more expert skill for Planet Zoo builders. It should be a lot easier now thanks to the new waterfall items, which for some people may be enough to get the aquatic pack on alone. Over here, you've got a pre-built adorable little penguin shelter. We've got a really cool fox rock collection, or faux, pardon me, rock collection. Look at those cowberries. I didn't even think to put the cowberries sideways. You should have heard me squeaking when I found that you could just put the cowberries sideways. Oh, and don't mind the fire. Like I said, the zoo is just for demonstration purposes only. And then there's even just a tiger rock collection. This is gonna sound really silly, but having spent so long detail putting rocks down, I love seeing pre-made rock collections because it's going to save you so much time when you just need to kind of fill in a corner or make something look like a cliffside. So I was excited to see that there is a pre-made rock collection as well, as silly as that sounds. 
We've also got a small aquatic toilet over here. We have got a log shed with plants on top of it. Probably a great little spot to go ahead and stick some of your animals, maybe some of your, um, your facilities. We have got ourselves a log shelter. This thing was really cool. It's a lookout tower. And you know what this makes me think about when I look at this lookout tower? And then if you take this lookout tower made out of logs, right? And you mix that with the gorgeous tails on our giant otters. Let me see if I can find one of them. Hello, friends. Where did you all go? If you take that lookout tower and you take the tails on these otters, do you know what I really want to see? I want to see beavers. The lookout tower makes me dream of seeing one of the most iconic of the North American animals. Fingers crossed it'll be added in at some point in the future. Just the beavers. How cool would it be to see beavers building a dam and being able to like maybe change the way the water flows in their own habitat? That would be kind of amazing. So I dream of beavers when I see this lookout tower. We've also got a really cool wooden lighthouse right over here. And then right over here, we've got an even bigger watchtower if you really want to go for a more aquatic theme. And speaking of aquatic themes, here are your detail items. All of the different decals that you can get, and yes, you can change the color on a lot of them, not the colored decals over here. You can change the color on the panels, and you can also change the colors on these <laughs> marbled, or excuse me, the concrete sculptures. So if you really just want to have a bunch of purple penguins waddling everywhere, you can by changing the color of the sculptures that are made out of marble. There's also a whole bunch of them made out of some bronze with a lot of great detail coloring where it looks aged, like it has spent time out in the elements. We've got the Fox Rock, the, pardon me, the Faux Rock Collection, where you can go ahead and make yourself a great underwater look. I think that's really fantastic for trying to get some beautiful scenery with your South American animals once again. Those otters, being able to try to get those in so you can make a beautiful river look for your tiny dwarf caiman. Lovely, lovely. We've got a few more detail pieces over here, including one of my favorite, the seagulls. Look at them. I cannot tell you guys how sad I was when I realized that these seagulls actually cannot be customized. I really wanted to have different colored seagulls just all over my world, but at least we can have a little flock of seagulls that would probably look adorable as a detail onto the sides of your beaches. So very, very cute. Here are more of the panels and different items. I am not personally a good builder with these particular things, but many of you guys are, and I love your creations on the workshop on Steam. So power to you if you can look at these and you can just immediately start dreaming of something super special. I love the roofing that has come in this. It comes in multiple colors, which I think is a great little touch. You can make a lot of really fun patterns that way. And then the other favorite thing that I have from this pack is the new <laughs> plant panels. There are just plant panels, like giant chunks of plants. I am going to be using this everywhere. You guys know me. I adore these. I'm going to be using these everywhere. I am so excited that I just have a chunk of plants to be able to put down as a wall piece, as a carpet way. Who knows how I'm going to use these, but I'm absolutely going to use these. And then also coming in this pack, are the new waterfall features. So these actually make you, allow you to make pre-built waterfalls of different widths and of different heights. These are amazing. They're going to make it so much easier for people to be able to build waterfalls without having to strain and stress over putting those itty bitty little elemental features in just the right places. I absolutely love these. And one of the cool things about them is you can actually customize their colors. So I made them purple, blue, and green just to show you how ridiculous you can go for your creativity on how you can change the colors of these. Also, there are some new special effects that have to do with bubbles. A really lovely little detail that put deeply into your waterway is going to be great. Small bubbles, medium bubbles, and then large bubbles right over here. Here are the amazing wooden panels in case you guys are really into those. Again, you can change these into one uniform color. I can't do them two different colors, but they can be one uniform color. And you've already seen some great examples of the different things that can be built with them. 
And then last, but absolutely not least, some of my favorite things, a giant barn, a whole bunch of plants that, as I showed you guys earlier, you, or plants, pardon me, the plants are coming up, a whole bunch of rocks that, as I showed you guys earlier, you can not only make look like a normal rock, but if you really want to get sort of fancy, you could go as mossy as you could dream. I love it. I love it. <laughs> That is just so exciting. You could just go, okay, let's see. Well, what happens if we make it look kind of like a lava rock? Can I make it sort of like take a lava rock look? Maybe if I flip the colors. Whoa! Let's try flipping the colors around a little bit. Oh, that's actually really cool. Okay, yeah, I could probably play with that for quite a while and like end up with some sort of little fire pit that you could make. The creativity, once you can really edit the colors, really starts going off the charts and I cannot wait to see what you guys create on the workshop. And then finally, last but absolutely not least, the new plants. There are not too many of them, but the ones that are here are big and leafy. So I am very happy to introduce you guys to the giant rhubarb. Behold, those are some big leaves. That makes me very, very happy. And look at how fuzzy it looks like on the inside. Look at that. What a cool guy. So we've got three types of giant rhubarb, small, medium, and large. Then we have also got right over here, your lipstick palm trees, a very distinctive type of palm tree that kind of looks like bamboo and a palm tree had a baby. Very cool, very beautiful. Really good if you're going to try to put those in some nice pots if you like to keep your plants neatly contained. Over here, we have got the ponytail palm tree. Ah la la, it looks absolutely lovely, small, medium, and large once again. Right over here, one of my absolute most favorite plants in the world, the Titan Aurum. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. One day I will see one of these guys in real life blooming. They are one of the biggest blooms, the biggest flower blooms in the entire world. So a very unique feature if you're into the botany like I am. And finally, we have some underwater plants. We have the underwater hydrilia plants. They come in large, medium, and small as usual. And these guys are meant to go under the water so they can really decorate the bottom of your rivers, your lakes, where you're keeping your penguins, your seals, your sea otters, and your dwarf caimans. And then right over here, we have some water hyacinth. Again, large, medium, and small with its little flowers. Excellent decorations to add in to the bottom of your new aquatic exhibits. So there you go guys i would say this definitely oh and i didn't even huh, include the new paths which i think are actually included in the update and this this is one of my favorite items the model rock arch behold covered in stack horn ferns and everything i love it but all right so that covers everybody that we actually have to work with right now friends i personally think that this is one of my favorite packs I think that so far I would rate this one as like probably my favorite due to how amazing it is just to watch the aquatic animals splash around and how diverse all of the different items are. The South American pack would definitely be a close second. I actually think that the South Americans packs decorative items are very, very strong and its animals are interesting. Since we already had so many big cats, the leopard was not a huge deviation away from some of the types of animals we already had. All of the animals that have currently been added in are extremely distinctive. The dwarf came in being the only one that's the most similar to animals that we already had in Planet Zoo. I think that the new waterfall feature alone is definitely a selling point for people who really love to do beautiful big builds like that. And I really like how we had two different types of environments represented here, a really leafy environment and a really good Arctic environment, and some great tools to be able to fill in the details in a lot of those. But each of the animals is extremely unique. Their animations are so unique. I feel like they're just getting, hi little baby. I feel like they're just getting better and better and better as each new pack comes out. Out. and I'm really excited to see what the future of Planet Zoo has to offer. So all right, this was our overview. It definitely went on for longer than I expected. Maybe that's a great example of how much stuff is actually in the pack. And we will be spending a lot of time waddling around with penguins in our upcoming Ice Ice Outpost adventures. And we will be spending time diving around with otters. Uh, maybe we'll go back to our special golden, golden frog hunting that we were doing, our, our special expedition in the high mountains of South America that we were doing in our, our other adventures too. Oh, little baby. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. Don't fall over. You look like you're about to fall over. Oh, this is precious. <laughs> but all right, guys, I'm really excited to share. Oh, we're feeding the baby. Yes. 
I am really excited to share even more adventures with you. If you would like to go ahead and join us for those adventures and literally the thousands, we have recently crossed 9,000 videos on our whole channel, the thousands of adventures waiting for you in our archives, then do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.